So once again, it was a couple of weeks before I would hear from my daughter again. Word on the street was that she was off the chain. I was so afraid of losing my daughter. I was scared to death. In an effort to track her down and get her into rehab, I called the police and I reported the car she was driving, which was her car. I had bought it for her, and that is a whole nother story. I reported it stolen because it was still in my name. Well, I, I had no luck with that. It had been a week and hadn't even got a call from the police. But I did get a call one morning from Motel Hell. That is where all the drug dealers and addicts, they hang out there, stay there, whatever. It's like a little community there for them. I get a call from a police officer there and he says, my daughter is there. And she called him reporting that her car had been stolen. So I get in the car and drive all the way over to the other side of the town. And when I get to Motel Hell, I see my daughter and the police officer standing out front and she was just crying her eyes out. So I walk over and I said, what the hell happened? And my daughter said that the night before that she and Charlie Manson, they had a room there and they got into a huge fight over dope, I think. And he kicked her out of the room and locked the door. He kept her phone. She did have a little trash bag with all her belongings in there and the keys to her car. It was 3 a.m. in the morning. So she walked outside and was out there crying with her little bag of belongings when three sympathetic gentlemen walked over and asked her what happened. She told them and they offered her the couch in their room to get some sleep until the sun came up so she could call me. So that's what she did. When she woke up the next morning, she, she got her little trash bag and walked outside and was going to her car and she couldn't find her keys. So she walked down to the car where she had parked it, by the way, away from the motel because she had heard that I had called in and reported it stolen. So she was hiding it. Well, she walked down to the little side road and lo and behold, the car was gone. So she walks back up to Motel Hell and calls the police officer and reports it stolen. When I get there, the police officer calls me over, pulls me to the side, and he says, well, through the registration um, at the desk, we have tracked um, one of the occupants down, and he is from Georgia, and he is a member of the Hells Angels motorcycle group, gang, whatever they are. And I, I, you need to take your daughter home, and if we hear anything, we'll let you know. Well, my daughter was crying her eyes out and didn't want to leave Motel Hell until her car was found. And I said, well, honey, I'm not staying here. Get in the car and let's go home. So we get home and she's just crying, crying, crying. And I call my insurance company. I had full coverage on the car. So I call them and report the car stolen. They tell me that I have to wait 15 days to see if the police have any luck locating it. And I say, okay. Well, deep down in my heart, 
I was hoping they wouldn't find that car because they had ragged it out. And it was used to take him to work. Boosting. Boosting is another word for stealing. And the car was in my name. So, I kept my fingers crossed that, that they would not find it and thought to myself, could things get any worse? Yes, they could, and they did. And that will be part two of Motel Hell. Don't miss it.